Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about shield grappling and shield manipulations. Okay, so over the last 16 years that I've been fighting, um, I've gone to a few tournaments, a few practices where full grappling was allowed. And one of the things that you learn really quickly uh, is that, that grappling is really tiring. Okay, it uses up a lot of energy. And what typically happens is after you finish fighting one person, uh, well, then you got to go fight somebody else, okay? Um, and w when you go to the next bout after that, uh, if, if you even if you've won through, um, through grappling, because you've expended a lot of uh, energy to get that earlier win, uh, you're now a lot more tired going into the next fight. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about in this video is some uh, shield manipulations uh, that are very efficient as far as the amount of energy that you use, okay? So that, that's an important consideration when you're fighting. How much energy are you actually expending uh, to fight? Um, you know, because you don't want to, because you have to, you know, consider that after you, even if you win this fight, then you got to go fight somebody else after that, or even in a battlefield type of situation. Um, if you're rolling on the, around on the ground grappling with somebody, well, your whole backside is exposed uh, to somebody else, you know, uh, you know, that can just easily just, just, just poke a sword into you, okay? So, uh, so grappling is something that you want to enter into cautiously. Um, and it's always better to use the weapon to kill somebody, okay? So let's talk about some, uh, some uh, shield manipulations that are very efficient. So the first technique I'm going to discuss is, you know, you, know, you line up with somebody, you both got sword and shield, right? So that's his shield over there. Uh, you know, that's his sword on that side over there. All right, so as we come into range, I'm going to bind his sword, right? Then come in, lock his sword between the two shields, and then attack the opening, okay? So what I've done there is, you know, after I bound the sword, okay, I lock the sword between the two shields, right? You see how they're locked together, and that frees me up to attack at some opening, okay? So I'm, that's, I'm, I'm locking his sword up between the two shields. Uh, so that's a, that's a technique that I have found um, uh, very effective, especially against HEMA fighters, um, who are, you know, uh, you know, particularly I-133, um, or I-33, or 133, uh, practitioners that are very big, uh, into coming, into measure, and get, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, you know, basically giving you their sword, you know, in, in terms of getting that bind, okay? Um, so, so if you can, you know, with a small buckler, it's not so easy to trap the, um, the sword between the two bucklers, but with the two big shields, uh, it's a lot easier, especially if you have straight edges like this, you know, to get that, you know, to get that lock, okay? So the other technique I want to uh, talk about is what we call a shield snatch, all right? And the idea here is as we match up over here, all right, what I'm going to do is, okay, what I did is I basically just snatch the shield, and this is a one-time fencing action, okay? Uh, this is not snatch, then attack, because um, as soon as you, you know you snatch somebody's shield, they're either going to push back or they're going to anticipate where you're going to attack them, and they're going to sword block. Um, so that, this is why this has to be done um, in, in one fencing time, in one action. What you're doing is you're snatching and attacking. Okay, so it's a quick motion. Um, and the other one, that's a shield snatch. You can also do what we call a shield press. So with the press. Uh, as we line up, I'm going to do the press and attack over there. So I'm pressing the shield, and by, when you press on, on somebody's shield here, that's going to bring the shield in over there like that. So as it comes in, it prevents them from bringing the shield back up and blocking the backside of their head. Um, so what you do, what you're going to do is as you come in, you're going to press and attack, and you can also go to the leg. Uh, you have more options on this side. Okay, so, okay, so you can press and attack. Uh, you can you can actually do multiple attacks because once you uh, press on the shield, right, and you press down the shield, it is a little. Bit, it can be a little bit harder for them to to uh, to roll out of that. So you you might actually have an opportunity to take two or three uh, strikes as you're backing out. So if I do a press, I might attack there. I take another one as I come out. Um, you know, so I might actually get two hits like that. Okay. So the other the next two. Um, um, types of um, shield manipulations that I'm going to talk about uh, are similar to the ones I just discussed. Uh, it kind of plays on the psychology a little bit. So what happens is if, if, I, if you do a shield snatch on somebody, right? So 
So let's say I come in and I snatch their shield, right? See how I'm pushing the shield that way? Well, the tendency of this person, if you take, if somebody basically yanks your shield open like this, you anticipate they're gonna attack you someplace over here. So the tendency is gonna be to close that shield up really fast. So what's gonna happen here is we're going to work off of, um, or play off of what, the, what we anticipate this person to do, okay? So as we snatch the shield, right? Right, they're gonna get pull the shield off that way. So while their shield is going in that direction, we're attacking the opposite direction. Okay, so so we're using the press to get them to move the shield uh, to this quadrant over here, so we can attack that quadrant over there. Okay, um, so again, so we're gonna snatch and then boom. Okay, All right. So so that's how we're gonna use. That's another way of using the shield snatch. Um, and and same thing goes with the press. If you come in and you press somebody. They're anticipating you can attack them on this side over here. Um, so what they're going to do is they're naturally going to yank the shield back. Okay. So so if you press somebody, right, and then you can immediately attack to that side uh, because again now you're anticipating that they're going to bring the shield back to that side in order to block that side ahead. So it's press, boom. Okay. Um, with the uh, you know one of the ways that you can also use this technique is without actually moving their shield, uh, you can also prevent them from moving their shield okay so what I mean by that so let's talk about the shield snatch right so the way I did it before is I actually moved the shield and attack right so it was you know right so I moved it and attacked well here's the thing if I want if I'm lining up over here one of the things I can do is come in I haven't actually touched the shield yet but if I now step over here right then naturally you know if I'm lined up over here and then somebody pivots to that side I'm naturally gonna wanna you know pivot with them right well, if their shield is there and I hit their shield, it's going to prevent me from putting my shield where I want to be. Okay, so that's another way that you can do it without actually uh, doing the shield snatch. Um, just by placing your shield there, it prevents them from bringing it back. So that's another type of shield manip manip manipulation. Uh, one of the things to be aware with these uh, shield manipulations is a lot of times if you do it really good, they don't even realize that you've touched their shield. So... Um, you know, uh, you know, if, if you're lining up over here, right? They're not. They're really not going to know that you hit their shield. All they're going to know is that they that you hit them on the side of their head, um, and that they, in their mind they're thinking they just weren't able to get their shield over there fast enough. So, um, you know, that's a, that's one of the ways that this works out a lot of times. Um, and I know, like a lot of times, I, when I when I have executed on people, um, you know. You know, and I talk to people a a after the fact, they don't realize that I actually snatched their shield. They just think I was really fast in getting to that side of their head and that uh, they just weren't fast enough in getting the shield over there. They didn't realize that I actually stopped their shield, with my shield, uh, from getting there, okay? So, so that's, and, and that's, that's what makes it really effective. If you can do it in such a way that people don't even realize you're doing it, um, that's, that's when you know you're doing it really good, okay? So again, it's a, you know, one time fencing action. Um, it's not one, two, it's one, and you do both things at the same time. Uh, one more thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, in lefty versus righty fighting. Um, and this will work either way, whether you're righty or a lefty. As long as you're, you know, if you're righty fighting a lefty or a lefty fighting a righty, this one's going to work out pretty good for you. Let me just put shields here. Okay, so um, he's a righty, I'm a lefty now, okay? With the righty versus lefty fighting, basically both shields are on the same side of the body, so we're basically both fighting to cover this angle. Because basically, if, I'm, if, I'm, if you're a righty and I'm a lefty, you know, um, you know, the swords are on the same side, so we're both basically attacking on the same side. The typical strikes here are basically that side of the head, leg over here, Winker how over there. So those are the typical strikes when you have a lefty versus righty fighting. Um, so what I want to do here, all right, as far as a shield grapple, and this is actually a full-on grapple um, because you're actually locking the shields together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to threaten that side over there to get him to move the shield over, okay? So when I threaten over there, he's going to move his shield over. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hook the back side of his shield like that and press it forward. And then that's going to allow me to attack over here. Okay, so um, what I'm doing is I'm basically you're hooking the guys, 
shield and bringing it down like this, which is gonna rotate them. They're not gonna be able to come back unless they're extremely strong, unless they're a lot bigger than you. Uh, and even if they are, your sword's gonna move a lot faster than their body is. Uh, so if you can get the hook the back side of the shield and bring it forward like that, the back side of their head's gonna be open over there. The only way to get out of this um, is basically throw your sword over your back to cover, you know, to cover any incoming attacks and then move forward, okay? So instead of pulling back to try and force yourself, force your way out of that, you actually throw your sword back and move forward to unhook yourself. Because that, that's what you gotta do. You have to unhook yourself in order to get out of that. Uh, one more thing I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about. I wanna talk to you guys real quickly about shield bashing. Let me put this down. All right, so let's talk about shield bashing for a second. Um, if you give somebody uh, that's, you know, who's relatively untrained with a shield, right, you give them a sword and shield, right, and they're fairly new, uh, they're gonna basically try and hit you with the sword, right? They're gonna see that you're blocking everything because they don't know how to, how to you know, how, how to uh, work the sword to get, you know, to, you know, against the angles of the shield. And they're gonna get frustrated. And at some point, they're gonna start trying to hit you uh, with the shield okay so here's the thing to understand with uh, trying to hit somebody with a shield right a sword is light and quick okay that tip okay it's moving at about 100 miles an hour you know when I'm moving it fast okay if you shield bash somebody right you know maybe my shield is moving forward at 20 miles per hour so you have a light quick sword here you got a heavy slow shield here right so quick sword heavy slow shield if if you can't hit somebody with a quick sword what makes you think you're gonna hit them with a slow shield okay um, if you've got two people in the lining up right and you got this guy's trying to hit me with his shield edge right because he can't hit me with a sword well if I can block his sword I can also block his shield so if he's trying to hit me with a shield you know I mean that's big and slow I mean I can easily block his shield strikes with my shield and here's the thing with the shield strikes okay you know this is my guard that I normally want right that corner is blocking my head that corner is blocking that leg that corner over there is blocking my rear back there okay so when you go to shield bash somebody look what I just did I just opened myself up so if I'm gonna try and hit that guy over there okay right that's gonna open me up here okay the only other option we have is if I try to go up high like that, well, that just opened up everything over there. Um, so against an experienced opponent, right, if you get out of your guard and you try to hit them with the shield, um, you're going to get hit because you're, you're a lot slower. Your shield strike is a lot slower than their sword strike, okay? Um, so so that's one of the things I have found repeatedly. Uh, you know, people that try to shield bash... Uh, you know, get hit uh, because again, the, sh the shield is just slow. The shield is a lot better at blocking. The sword is a lot better at hitting. That's how this uh, weapon combination works. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you got any uh, questions, comments, feedback, uh, put in the comment section. If you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.